We are in Huntley right now in front of Barbecue King Smokehouse, a gorgeous, beautiful smelling place. Carcon Carne presented by the Autobarn Mazda of Evanston, which is a stone's throw and then another stone's throw from where we are right now, 1015 Chicago Avenue in Evanston. This car we're in, gentlemen, is a Mazda 3 rolled off the lot at the Autobahn Mazda. I've never looked back. I love this car. I'm going to ride this car. You know in a cartoon when you ride a car to the end and you, you slam the door and all the pieces just fall apart? That's how long I'm going to ride this car for until <laughs> it just it. completely nice. falls nice. apart like, like a Flintstones cartoon or something. Uh, yes, Autobahn Mazda of Evanson. Go check it out. Go take a test drive. Ride a Mazda CX-9. I love that. If you're a family person, if you have kids, that's a car you should be riding. Gentlemen, are you ready to eat barbecue and talk about the Chicago Rib Fest? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It's car con carne. Let's eat in the car. It's car con carne. And now here's the star of our show. James Van Alstom! All right, so we'll do a quick little roll call here. I, I mentioned we're at Barbecue King in Huntley. Jason, uh, whose surname I cannot pronounce. Smurlo, say it without the Z. Oh, that's easy. Totally easy. Smurlo. Uh, the owner of Barbecue King is in the backseat. Next to him, Brad Ball, spokesperson for Chicago Rib Fest. Chicago Rib Fest happening on 14th through 16th. So weekend after next if you're walking, watching on Facebook Live. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, June 14th, 15th, 16th. Mm -hmm. And this handsome son of a bitch right next to me. Handsome. <laughs> handsome. Handsome. Jeez. Handsome. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, uh, there's a reason he's on the radio. <laughs> oh, come <Yeah>. on. Exactly. <laughs> this tall drink of water next to me is Eric. Uh, he is, you've heard him on the air on 101 WKQX for years. Uh, 101 WKQX, don't forget, picnic tickets still available. 101 WKQX.com, uh, 101 WKQX on Facebook. Look How's at that? you with that plug. See, I, I've like done you're a professional broadcaster. It's like I've something. done that before. Uh, but Eric's here. <laughs> I figured Eric uh, actually, uh, one of his identities it means he spends a lot of time in this area. I thought, Eric, you should come and eat barbecue with me. Absolutely. And uh, we should uh, dig in because in this backseat right now, Jason has <laughs> stacked up an immense, an extraordinary amount of smoked meat. So as we talk about Rib Fest, as we talk about Barbecue King, as we talk about this tall drink of water next to me, uh, we're going to eat some amazing food. So, Jason, what do we have? All right. Well, I got you guys some wings because those are for me, and that's about one of the only things I still eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, don't, you could try those, but you're not getting any of those. So are these are these smoked wings? Are these? Uh, they're smoked, and then we uh, finish them up in the deep fryer, and then do our sauces. So everything's smoked. But Th that's one thing I forgot to mm -hmm. ask while we were inside. I wanted to see where you smoke everything. Is it? I can show you everything. Yeah. Out back. Yeah. Cool. Right out in back. So. Because I'll tell you, walking out of my car, uh, the first thing I noticed wasn't the lovely Americana gazebo across the street. First thing I noticed <laughs> was that smell, that smoke smell. I mean, it, speaking of cartoons, when you walk by this restaurant it's like those old cartoons where you see these scent fingers going through the air and they hook you by the nose and they pull you in <laughs> that's, that's what, what it's it like walking by barbecue mm -hmm. king yeah, in huntley totally. it's delicious um well these are for you because i heard you're a fan of burnt ends so you i really love like burnt ends nice. all right so delicious so explain if you will yes i know what burnt ends are but they're not something you commonly get at restaurants most barbecue places sell them till they sell out and they're kind of hard to get so what, what are burnt ends that's how we do it too um basically burnt ends are when you take the point from the deckle or the fat cap from the, the flat two parts of the brisket we separate them out you take that fattier part of meat you re-season it you put it back on the smoker and smoke it again so they're actually double smoked <laughs> and what we do for ours is we take <clears throat> ours and then we season them up and we chop them up and then right before they go out to you they go in the deep fryer for a little crispy crisp and then they come out like that oh dude so, yeah you can tell me how those are <laughs> Dig right on those awesome. don't suck oh my lord oh no you don't these are awful i'll just go ahead and take this <laughs> right now <laughs> and then oh there were goodness. three and then oh, here's man. the and the secret of a good barbecue place i know you brought some of your sauces but the secret is really does the meat stand on its own mm -hmm. and we don't does put any mean, meat on our sauce whatsoever there's uh sauce on every single table if you want to go ahead and go ahead and destroy that you can go ahead and put sauce all over it but we I don't could, put I anything could, out i could take this bear back anytime mm -hmm. this is uh 100 you know what i'm saying mm. you guys want sauce i have sauce in here <laughs> sure what kind of sauces do you use do you, do you i make? never thought that you were going to use the word bareback to describe smoked meats you can do that because <laughs> okay. it's all bareback dude well, that's exactly yeah, what it is. i guess it is <laughs> i've got a, a a spicy an original a uh, 
Carolina mustard is what we call it. Yeah, right on. Pretty much that. every single gamut of our sauces. So mm. if you guys want some of that, just let me know and I've got some. Mm. So. Okay, oh, that's. I'll that's just be back here with the burn ends. Now, I know you can't tell us everything that's in that rub, but that rub is delicious. And those burn ends. Mm-hmm. Give me a hint of what's in there. Um, let's see. Something that would you wouldn't expect that's going to be in there. Um, Italian seasoning. Really? Yeah, there's a little bit of that in there. Not going to lie to you. That is unorthodox. Yeah. Hang so, on, I'm going to turn on the mood light. All right, cool. You got it. There you go. Now, now okay. we're, we've gone Hollywood here. Now. All right, so what do you... What do I want to give you next? Let's oh. see. Oh, this is... Right. Okay. Go for it. Dude, don't pass those off. Yeah. <laughs> um... This is our pretzel bomb. This is what we put on. The pretzel bomb. Yes, this is what we put on Food Network in 2013, the first year we did Chicago Rib Fest, when Anthony Anderson was out there doing Eating America. Mm-hmm. So this is basically a pulled pork sandwich with mac and cheese <laughs> on a pretzel bun. This is not going to suck either. So you can have that, and I'm gonna need, you're going to need some silverware for that. You guys can... Uh, here, you're going to need I that. I want to be clear. I'm wearing, my <laughs> fat, I'm wearing my fat pants tonight. You better wear your stretchy pants, dude. And then uh, that also, I, I did some sides. I did some different sides. That's going to have uh, um, fried potato salad. And I think, oh, does that have, uh, what's go. the other side? You get a napkin. There's there too. One, there one napkin. That's what all did? you get this evening, James. This is the pretzel bomb. This is what God Here, Barbecue right. King put on the terrorist Thanks, watch list several years ago. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's the side? I'm sorry. That is the fried potato salad. That is fried not, potato salad. Oh, it's awesome. Yes. It's, that it's is, yeah. uh, one of my favorite yeah, dynamite. Yep, they all know that. So the story behind this is we take just uh, some <laughs> red rusted potatoes, throw them in a deep fryer, and then you mix it um, while they're warm with a uh, special sauce that we make in-house. It's a buffalo mayonnaise, you know, buffalo sauce mayonnaise base. Oh and then it's God. got your, you know, celery eggs and all your other uh, potato salad elements in that. Oh, here, Eric, I got you another one. There's one in here. Wait, there's me. another. Okay, so yes. yeah, no, no, no. Here, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't here. even have to here's fight an, anybody. Here's for another it. one. So there's another one. Like this. Yes, yeah, right. so you got that. Good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> Great, grab your yeah. half. All right, cool. <laughs> you know how to do that. And right then on. We got, and that's our sweet slaw in there. That's gonna be probably. Oh, this is. I hope there's a napkin back there. I hope <laughs> there is. Uh, there's Texas toast. That's good enough. I got a pressure yeah, washer like, in the back. That's like a barbecue barbecue napkin, right? Texas toast. Looks like a little cornbread, right? I get. What, what do you, I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's cornbread. Yep. That's cornbread. I've got cornbread back here with some mac and cheese, too, but there's mac and cheese on that one. So you guys can try that as well. well looks like we're frozen. Oh, there we are. So, uh, I do want to thank people for watching. Let's see. Giorgio Reyes, uh, an amazing human being, is watching. And we're, we froze up again. Giorgio is watching. Uh, Tyler Wildy, uh, who runs a fantastic place called Epic Deli, is watching. Oh. Oh, love that place. Love that place. That place is awesome. Yeah, we we're totally frozen. I hope we unfreeze because that's an unflattering look for Eric. That's very bad for Eric. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, it's better. Okay, I can't actually make this move, so I'm not going to touch anything. Uh, I am going to try the bomb here. Oh, my good, The mac and cheese with the pulled pork. And that mac and cheese got seven different cheeses in it, too, so it's not crap. Seven different cheeses? Seven, maybe eight. I don't know. I can't remember. Is Velveeta one of them? Uh, no. Let the record show. If you're keeping track at home, the mac and cheese drew first blood on my shirt tonight. Oh, you got it. Nice. It, it was bound to happen. <laughs> I wish we could zoom in on that. Oh, well. And I knew better. I put on a shirt that I actually have to iron. I put it on this morning knowing I'd have to do this tonight. I've been wearing nothing but, like, black T-shirts lately. I put on a dress shirt today. Like some kind of rube. Uh, this is delicious. Holy God. That's going to be at Rib Fest. Again, it's been there every year since 2013. So, so I guess the question is, why, would, why, as the spokesperson for Rib Fest, why would you allow anyone else but Barbecue King to be part of Rib Fest? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, a ton of amazing food. We have uh, 13 providers doing ribs, uh, food vendors doing ribs this year. And then we've got another... Uh, we've got another 14 uh, food vendors who are doing food besides ribs. So, oh, you have bar- like you have like vegan options and gluten free options, right? Yeah, we do, and people can check out more uh, about what the exact menu items are on the website, which is ribbest-chicago.com. Um, yeah, so much food. Uh, one of uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we offer is a uh, every food vendor has to uh, sample, and so they do a three bone sampler. And um, three bone sampler, uh, three bone <laughs> sampler, and uh, so we do offer people the opportunity to go to each of the rib vendors and then uh, sample each of the ribs, um, and uh, then vote 
for the People's Choice Best Ribs, uh, which we'll announce uh, Sunday night at 9 o'clock before the headlining band. Now, last time I went to Rib Fest, it was either last year or the year before, I remember sleeping really well the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. I think, uh, I mean, I've been involved with Rib Fest since 2006, and typically I don't need to eat for at least two days afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's true. That's why I don't eat a lot of this. I just can't do it. Uh, yeah. I, I really like the, I really like the pulled pork on the bomb. What I find at a lot of barbecue places, pulled pork should be so easy, but a lot of places it's kind of bland and flavorless. Mm -hmm. Lots of flavor going on here in your pork. This is great. Awesome. Do you know how many pretzel bombs you sold last year? I saw them everywhere. Mm, I want to say uh, it was at least 1,500. Oh, my Lord. And that's oh, the other wow. reason I'll comment on why they can't only have us, because you guys put so many freaking people through there, okay? I couldn't serve everybody food, so I need those other people to help me. So um, we, we should say where Ribfest is. We should, yeah. It's at uh, it's uh, in the North Center neighborhood uh, up on the north side of Chicago. It's at the uh, on Lincoln Avenue at Irving Park and Damon, so 4,000 North, uh, 4, north Lincoln um, is the address that you can plug into your, plug into your Google Maps. And I should mention, as we're eating Barbecue King food, uh, this is one of two Barbecue King locations. It's correct. It, there's, there's a whole kingdom uh, for Barbecue King. There's a kingdom in McHenry County right now. Yes, there is. There's uh, one in Woodstock. It's uh, 125 East Calhoun Street, um, right off the historic Woodstock Square. Uh, that was our first one. We opened up over seven years ago. The one in Huntley here is in downtown Huntley, uh, 11706 Coral Street, which um, we just opened in November of 18. So oh, okay. So this is new. It looks, this is a new one. It's a brand new building. It looks new. Mm -hmm. It lo looks clean. Yep. And I gotta say, we're here on Wednesday night. Yes, today is today Wednesday. Is Wednesday. Okay, I, I'm yeah. so disoriented. Uh, Wednesday night, <laughs> lots of lots of people shuffling in and out of there on a Wednesday night. Sleepy little weekday night. Lots of people coming in for their barbecue. That's how it is. Why wouldn't they though? Uh -huh. I mean, all right. So it, how do you how do you properly prepare yourself for going to Rib Fest? Is it like a 24 <laughs> hour fast ahead of time? Because to me, like I just skip breakfast and I feel like mm -hmm. maybe I'm. <laughs> like selling myself short, so I, I don't know, dude. I'll give you, I'll give you a funny story. The first time we did it, well, the first time they wanted me to do it was in 2012, and I couldn't do it. I'm like, I'm just not ready. We just opened the restaurant. They're like, okay, well, hit us up next year. So they come next year. I was prepared. I'm gonna do it. So I start calling around. We stayed up, and this is a true story. True story. We were up for 48 hours straight at our first getting ready for our first rib fest. We now usually what we do is we set up real early, like five in the morning on a Friday. And then we serve that night. So that's pretty much the mm -hmm. standard. We've done that for the last you know, few years, and it's, it's pretty easy for us. The first year, we did that, but we were up Thursday, so we stayed up all the way Thursday, all the way until Friday, and then didn't go to bed till like, Saturday morning at, like, 3 a.m. because when we finished and broke everything down. You don't know. I mean, now I've got an idea. I've got numbers. I've got things like that. But the first time you do something, it's all a complete for guess sure. on how much stuff to bring. All right. I, I'm going to show the <clears throat> fried potato salad. I also took a bite. You can work around my where I put my fork in there. Awesome. Thank you. I also want to showcase more of your food because I'm using a loaner phone tonight to do the uh, Facebook <laughs> Live. And apparently the battery uh, goes pretty quickly on this phone. I've somehow dropped like 40%, so we've got like 15% battery left. So I want to make sure we showcase more of your stuff All before right. we lose everybody. Here's a brisket cheesesteak. That's going to be down there at Rib Fest as well. That's a brisket sandwich with uh, grilled peppers and onions with provolone cheese. That's our version of a Philly cheesesteak, but it doesn't have the disgusting yellow cheese on it that's super salty and makes you want to vomit when you eat it. It's oh. actually really good. So. That looks good. <laughs> awesome. This looks stupid. Uh, by the way, just had that mouthful of potato salad. A little bit of heat in there. A little bit. That's yeah. the, it's like a, it's a buffalo Bay sauce, so absolutely. Wow. So we've got But very that. flavorful. Yes, now here is, because uh, I, I know I filled you guys up on all the carbs and everything. Here's just a platter of meat for you. So here's just sliced brisket, <laughs> nice. sausage, and some pulled pork. That's awesome. That's all going to be down there as well. So tell me again, why are That's we all big fat in too. Chicago? This is why. Here's I watch can't big figure beans. it out for the life of me. Mm -hmm. you can't, you know. Okay, this is it. Here's the bucket of meat. Oh, look at the sausage. Tell me about the sausage. Sausage is a uh, spicy Polish. It's smoked like everything else. Um, and it's uh, pre-done by one of our manufacturers based off our specs and recipes. And what you see is what you get. It's delicious. We do it two different ways. We slice it, put it on a griddle, and heat it up. The other way that we do it is uh, we throw it in the deep fryer when we do a meat madness just to kind of 
had a little there's uh, definitely heat on there. this oh yeah absolutely people love it though it's not i mean it's it's good but it's not it's not like burn your face off heat well and also you know going back to the italian seasoning you mentioned in the rub there's a surprising something in this sausage flavor wise in a good way yes i know you probably can't tell me no i can't <laughs> that one i can't tell you eric eat this <laughs> <laughs> Dude, mister, I work 12 hours. What are you talking about? Let's go. <laughs> Come on, tough guy. Yeah. Eat some know. sausage. Then... Oh, my right God. On. Okay, and then here is a half slab of St. Louis ribs. Those are going to be... How, how deep is that bag back there? I'm done. That's it. Okay. Well, I got some other stuff for you, but you could take that home. But we got the showcased elements that we need. Oops, sorry. Oh, man, so, that sausage is spicy. So, it yeah, is, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. The sausage is one of the ones. I still like that one. That one's really good. Oh, that's dynamite. Oh, Holy yeah. cow. Well, we're here to promote Rib Fest, and by God... Here come the ribs. Oh, yeah. Yes. And on that note, I am going to shut down the Facebook Live and keep the podcast recording, which you'll be able to hear soon <laughs> at carconcarney.com, only because we have 10% battery left. What the hell? Uh, I want to thank Paul for watching, Tyler, who I mentioned, Giorgio Reyes, Ian for watching, Santi Santiago, Kelly for watching, Chef Ben Randall, Blair, Stephanie. Thank you all for watching tonight. Much appreciated. Uh, again, the full podcast edited and produced uh, will be on Carcon Carne. Com, Carcon Carney, presented by the Audubon Mazda of Evanston. Go you to the Chicago Rib Fest, 13th, 14th, 15th, right? No, 14th, 14th, 15th, 14, 15, Father's 16th. Day weekend. Soon. Father's Day weekend. Father's Day weekend. <laughs> it's Father's Day weekend. <laughs> there it is. Friday, Saturday, there it is. Sunday. Bring Dad for the smoked meats. Also, thank you to Katie for watching. All right, so this will continue. Thank you. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Oh, hashtag handsome devils. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right, we need to figure out the, yeah, we, this rib situation. I, I got, look I got at, look three at boxes on top of me. Okay, hold on here. I'll take this one for you, buddy. I got this one for you. All right, there you go. Are there wet naps in that bag? I can get you some out of the restaurant. Okay. There's, uh, because once once you start cranking open the ribs. Bro. Oh, man. So how long do the ribs smoke for? Uh, it depends on you know how full we are or whatever, but um, anywhere from two and a half to three hours. That's what we do. That seems quick. It is quick. It's the quickest thing we do. That and chick, actually chicken is. Chicken's the quickest. Chicken's like an hour, hour and a half. But uh, ribs, yeah, two and a half, three hours. Um, that's at least on the smoker, and then the rest of the process is maybe another half hour, 40 minutes. But they're definitely done in under five hours. So Now, I'm sure your chicken is delicious, but mm -hmm. isn't ordering chicken at a barbecue place kind of a rookie move? It's like sacrilegious, but <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, you have no idea how much chicken we sell. It's ungodly. Really? I'm wow. telling you 100%. It's, we sell so much. It, it, it actually amazes me. Um, we sell a lot of, um, people go from our brisket to our chicken and our half chickens. We do them, we have our rub, we smoke them. And then again, we whack them in the fryer so we can crisp up that skin and people mm -hmm. will come in here and eat it twice a week. I mean, I had a lady, she came from Lake Forest every Sunday for our special. And get out. To come and oh get God. it. Cause we really? will do like, uh, we'll do a $10 half trip. chicken special, half chicken, two sides and a drink for 10 bucks. She'd come and just order bags of them and take them back. Uh, she loved it that this much. This podcast will never stop. My fingers are too <laughs> covered in sauce and everything else to actually push the stop button. So suck it up. We're here all night. <laughs> Marathon session. We've got session. enough food to survive. Yeah, we're definitely all right. So with Rib Fest, there are awards. Like this, mm -hmm. this is a thing. Like oh, yeah. a, there are judges. And mm -hmm. so yep. how many people, yep. how many rib, rib producers or smokers are participating every year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, we uh, have found that for the best guest experience, uh, somewhere between 12 and 15. So we've got, uh, I think we got 13 uh, lined up for this year. Um, and then we do have, so we have three contests. Um, uh, so we have two best rib contests. And one is the uh, people's choice. So people can go around and sample the ribs and then um, uh, deposit their ballot. Um, and then we also, on Sunday afternoon, uh, starting at uh, about 5.30, we have a celebrity judge uh, competition. And um, so that happens down in front of our Bud Light South Stage, uh, down by Lincoln and Irving Park. And it goes for about 45 minutes, and our judges do a blind uh, taste testing. Um, the ribs are served without sauce, as they should mm -hmm. be. Sauce on the side, rather, so it's available. Um, and then the judges do a... Um, they. Uh, they yes. mark everything up and then wet nap delivery <laughs> oh, right nice. to the car. Look at this. Oh, Sorry, what a star. Star. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, dude. Right that on. That is probably the can't see. Just that was my, that was my media guy really hooking us up. The window. Yeah, call him back Jason's over here. Jason's brand new employee. And now he can hear you. Oh, man. He's looking at you. Get him back over here. I want to kiss him hard on the mouth. Thank you. <laughs>
that, that's him, dude. <laughs> so we tally up the votes I'm then on here. Sunday night, and we announce uh, we announce the best ribs, uh, the people's choice, and celebrity judging uh, best ribs before our uh, nine o'clock headliner on Sunday night, which is uh, Post Animal this year. That's so Post cool. Animals from uh, they're from Chicago, and then uh, you have one of my favorite Chicago bands, Fort Francis, is playing. One yes. Yeah, that's right. They are. Um, they, uh, you know, uh, and they were on your podcast recently, weren't they? They certainly were. And they were a, a delight to hang out with. Yeah, I, uh, I actually started listening to them on uh, um, after hearing your podcast. They're really music's great. Yeah, yeah that's great. Totally cool. Yeah. Ribfest uh, is um, Ribfest uh, does not bring in any cover bands. We are uh, exclusively original and always have been. Bless you. Yes. So we're uh, that is. For sure, one of our claim to fames, and in the very crowded uh, Chicago festival music market, we do uh, try and make sure that we get that word out there very kind of, very explicitly that Ribfest is, there's no cover music here. So people are like, I've never heard of any of these bands. Like, Which well, is great. And it, you need yeah. to come and listen to these people, because these are the up-and-comers, for sure. Uh-huh. Without a doubt. So yeah, nice job on the booking. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're uh, Yeah, we're super excited about this year's lineup. Uh Big headliners, we've got uh, Post Animal, uh, San Cisco is another one that we're super excited about. Uh, Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram is going to come rock some blues out. Good. Um, I've been listening to a ton of his music. That's awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, The Dip. Um, oh, man. Uh, you can find out we've got 21 performances all weekend long. We do run, uh, so the festival hours are 5 to 10 on Friday, and then noon to 10 Saturday and Sunday. Um, and you can find out the whole lineup on ribfest-chicago.com or our very busy Facebook page as well. You know, for, for some festivals, I would say that Father's Day is high risk for a street festival. This is a festival that is made for Father's Day. Mm. This is a festival mm. that dads want to go to. Yeah, I just want to spend the day outside listening to music, eating ribs. That, 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 and, and drinking beer. Let's not forget about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, and you have no shortage of that going on. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, the beer will flow cold and uh, all all weekend long. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is actually, Ripfest has not been on Father's Day weekend. Um, it started off on Father's Day weekend all the way back in, like, 1999. Um, and then over the years, they moved it away, and it was uh, traditionally kind of the second weekend in June. But because of the way the weekends fell um, and looking at some other things, the committee decided on exactly what you just said, James, was that Father's Day, ribs, barbecue, drinking beer, great music, just made a ton of sense. Yeah. No need to fire up the grill or the smoker. It's a brilliant Let the pros do it for you. Yeah, Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've so we're super festival. excited about it. We've done other fests in the past, and it's been, they've done really well. This one I was excited to this year. To you know, we we do it every year, and I was really excited when it was on Father's Day because it was a place that I'd like to be. And guess what? I, I'm going to be there anyway, so I might as well uh, have a holiday so I can bring my kids down as well. Or a holiday, our day. And it's, you know what? It is a freaking holiday. It's our freaking day. Yeah, it is. That's right. There it is. All that's right. right. Yeah. And uh, in addition to Barbecue King, it's only fair that we reference. Uh, there are so many other restaurants, as you kind of mentioned, uh, City Barbecue, Famous Dave's, Fireside Restaurant, uh, Real. Urban Barbecue is out there, Wrigley Barbecue, uh, Byron's Hot Dogs, if you're looking for uh, an alternative to barbecue, but something authentically Chicago. I mean, the list goes on and on. Again, it's all on your website if you want to scope it out or just just show up. Just show yeah, up that weekend. Just show up. Maybe, maybe meet a mate while you're there. It's a very social thing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's the best part of going to these things is just getting out with your neighbors and or meeting up with friends. Well, and there's something, you know, you mentioned like the three bone samplers and stuff like that. There's a social aspect to to the meat like oh have you tried mm-hmm. barbecue right. king have you tried whatever oh it's awesome and then you just kind of and people up. will ask us too and we'll tell them hey go try this guy go try that guy and they all kind of get on their favorites like cubs versus socks <laughs> same difference it's like right. i like this i like that okay cool there's one group of people that have come to uh about four or five people who come to rib fest every year in white t-shirts yes and then they do barbecue sauce handprints <laughs> like from every place that they eat. I'm with. telling you, you guys listen up. It's the best idea ever. I give everybody a high five. Wear a white t shirt because nobody wants to give you napkins because they cost money and you take too many of them. So wear a white t shirt and then take it off and throw it out and then put your regular shirt on when you're done eating. I'm, you're going to thank me later. That Trust is the me bottom line from a restaurateur right, right there. <laughs> right on. Absolutely. That is the bottom line. Uh, my pro yep. move I, I do the cargo shorts and I stuff like the, the Huggies uh, diaper wipes. Yes. In the nice. pocket. Those are good. Okay, I'm stealing that move from you, James. Besides it, that, or that's, that's the problem with really Now, on a related note, apparently cargo shorts are not okay anymore. No, you can wear them. We're just old. 
I think I think we're of the age where it just doesn't matter anymore. If, it, if, <laughs> it's, right, util- if it's utility, mm-hmm. if it works for you, you should just go ahead and rock it out. But yes, I I have added the non cargo short to my wardrobe just because. Sometimes you feel just weird wearing them out. It's just practical. You feel it's just old. Practical. I don't want to feel old all the time. I still you look feel old, young. dude. Oh, you there's a guy walking it. down the street right Thanks. now, right here in Huntley, wearing his cargos, and he do- he doesn't give a fuck. He is <laughs> no, wearing the cargo no. shorts. <laughs> nope. he, he is proud and. Bless you, sir. You're an inspiration to us all. But, I mean, first they took away our, our jorts. They won't let us wear jean shorts anymore. They being the, the fashionistas. Now they take away our cargo shorts. I have so little left to cling to. I don't want to buy new clothes. Eh, the shorts was kind of a good move, I think. I think so, too, because you know what? I didn't get the experience of that, and that was illegal in every way. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie to you. Those are not. I don't think I'd ever wear those if they were cool ever again. Sorry. No. About, like painter's shorts with the, like, the little hook for a hammer. That's like carpenters. That's like cargo shorts. It's the yeah. same thing. Carpenter pants. I used to wear those because I had a pl- place for my phone. See? I liked it. It was See, practical. Just, women have it so well, they can carry a purse and not be judged. We don't have a purse. We just have pockets, and they look silly when they're overstuffed. Uh, women, when they're feeling bloaty, they can throw on some spanks. We don't have spanks. There are a lot of things that we don't get to enjoy that make life easier. Yes, but we could wear Spanx. I believe they do make a male version of it. Man Spanx? I don't know how I know this. I've just seen it on the internet. That's well, the you're, only reason I know. You're a media personality. It's your job to know what's going on in the world. Yeah, th- there you go. That's, Again, listen to Eric on 101 WKQX every Saturday night and elsewhere. throughout Sunday afternoons. Sunday afternoons? Uh, occasionally, uh, Monday through Friday uh, stint when you know the regular people are off. They, they like to call me and have me fill in and do the alternative music. So, yeah. Do the alternative music. Yeah. That's that's what I do. What time is that usually? Um, 7 to uh, 11 on Saturday nights and 3 to 7 on Sunday No, but what about when you fill in like on Monday oh, through? He's all across. Oh, oh, I time. oh yeah. I've, uh, yeah, I do everything pretty much. So people are actually listening to you then? Pretty much. People wow, know dude, who you're Eric a big is. deal. Nice. Look at this guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm busting his nuts, guys, because I know this guy way back. So there's some history there. So I could do that. <laughs> Jason and I went to high school together. Yes. Jason and I played football together. Uh huh. All right. So, so that's a fair starting point. Jason, what was Eric like in high school? Pretty much like he is now bald, ugly, and tall. <laughs> Wrapped it up for you there. So, Eric, <laughs> besides Ball Buster, what was Jason like in high school? <laughs> You're looking at it just a little less gray. Yep. So, yeah, pretty so, right. Well, Jason, when did you learn to smoke, or when did you realize, oh, I'm good at this, I want to open up a place? Um, I was probably, let's see, I think like 2004, I had a charcoal distribution company, um, and the first thing I cooked, I'm like, you know what, this product is really good. So I, I was uh, selling charcoal to all the... Brazilian Trascarias in uh, the Chicagoland area. So I was like the Brazilian Mafia charcoal guy. And they needed charcoal, they called me. Um, and I'm like, this product is really good. The food that they were cooking was very, very good. Yeah. So I decided, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try this. I think it'll be good. So I bought like a little char griller side smoker, got some beef ribs, cooked them. They were freaking terrible. I ate them out of principle. They were, oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. I ruined them. Like, they were awful. I mean, they were nothing like what you guys are eating right now. And it just kind of log, you know, just kind of rolled from there. My mom was a really good cook. Um, just kind of had a passion for food. Never never went to culinary school. Never worked in a restaurant. I worked at McDonald's for two weeks. And I worked at a, a Bull Valley Golf Club, Eric, for a week. Right. And, and okay. you know what I mean? And that was it. I mean, I, like. I had no clue what I was doing. I would just put shit together. And people were like, that tastes awesome. I'm like, cool, because I have no idea how I did it. So. That's, so you, how, that's how you, it started. You came by it honestly. You, you've kind of found your you found your niche, right? Hundred percent. I love that, and I think that's not an uncommon story with barbecue restaurateurs. I think uh, Barry Sorkin of Smoke, similar thing. Like I don't think he went to culinary school. I think he no. Just, those guys were all uh, white collar IT guys. I think. Yeah, I, I think Barry was like a backyard barbecue guy, and he. Just, I think that's how they started. Yeah, which I, I love, and it. Mm-hmm. What I love about barbecue is. It does seem like equal parts art and science in cooking. It is. Like the the vent control and that stuff, Mm -hmm. that seems very science. But the art of the rub and injecting meat and that stuff, that's that's like. That's super true because my guys now with opening this place, that's why I've been here so much. uh, It's only seven months old. They tell me, well, what temperature do we pull the meat? I'm like, dude, you cannot do that. I'm like, here, watch. And I take the thermometer. Like, well, you know when it's done. I go, yeah, but am I looking at the thermometer? No. I just know how it goes in or you know how you squish it or how you feel it. I can't teach that to people. Yeah. And you can't. You can read books. You can take classes. You can go online. You can watch video. The bottom line is for anybody that's aspiring to be a great smoker or a great uh, barbecue guy is you're just going to have to freaking do it and screw shit up. 
And then when you figure it out, make sure you take a lot of notes because then you look back at those notes <laughs> and, and do it. That's, that's it. A, it's the art it's and all science. It is. It's the only mm-hmm. you can only. That's the only way to do it. You can't you, you can't go by. Oh well, I'm going to pull it at this temperature because guess what? If you're outside and it all of a sudden drops 15 degrees overnight, guess what? You just added probably 30, 40 minutes to your cook time, not even knowing it. But people don't think about that. The thing about smoking, I have my Weber Smoky Mountain uh, smoker at home. It's that leap of faith. It's mm-hmm. just letting shit cook and don't look at it. Don't open just it up. Walk Everybody away. Wants yeah. to open it up. I'm Everyone... going to open and look at it. Why? It's still there. Uh-huh. It didn't change. I want to see the bark. Yeah. It's an, it's, trust me, it's not there. It's only been smoking like an hour. My guys tell me all the time, what do I do? I go close it. I go, I almost want to put a timed lock on the smokers inside. Because they always want to, oh, I'm serious. They always want to open them up and look. And I'm like, what are you going to look at? Well, I want to see how the smoke is. Go look outside at the smokestack. I go, every time you open it up, you're adding time to it. Right. I go, it's still freaking there. I go, how about you do this? Open it up and it's going to go, oh, look at that. Like the And then like the holy grail symbol is going to come out when all everything's done perfectly. If you leave it closed. That's right. You'll hear the angels exactly. sing. Exactly. Yeah. The angels will sing when you open it and it's done right. All right. So, gentlemen, in conclusion... The 21st annual Rib Fest is June 14th through 16th, Father's Day weekend. Uh, this place we're at, Barbecue's King Smokehouse, it's in Huntley, it's in Woodstock. It's awesome. I, I, one you. of the things I'm most excited yeah. about right now in the short term is stopping the podcast so we can finish all the food you brought in the car. Dude, if you finish all this food, you're not going to go home because you're going to pass out. I, but you're more than welcome to take it I've, I've done some amazing <laughs> things in the name of this podcast. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. I think yeah. James is up to it. So. <laughs> it's a good uh, thing I'm close to This man likes his food. I don't know if you know. <laughs> uh, Brad Ball, spokesperson for the Chicago Rib Fest. Thank you for hooking this up, and thank you. You're doing God's work uh, on Father's Day weekend bringing smoked meats to the masses yeah thanks very much for uh, having us on the podcast a great opportunity love uh, barbecue king there's a ton of amazing food we're gonna have some great music uh check us out uh plug the web- website one more time mm-hmm. ribfest-chicago.com uh 14th 15th and 16th we will be there and want to see you too and if people are looking for you at the rib fest you're the guy who looks busy uh, absolutely yes <laughs> and eric we mentioned uh Saturdays and Sundays, for sure, we can hear you on 101 WKQX, and it's always a delight to hear you during the week when you pop up, which oh, seems you. more frequently than ever. Yeah, well, you know, people like to take vacations, so, you know, it's it's nice to, to be able to step in and, and, and do the fun stuff, which is just to, to play music and have a good time, so. All right, everybody, thank you. This I, I, We should do this every week, just the four of us. Uh, uh, sounds like fun. Are you kidding me? My waistline <laughs> wouldn't survive this. You guys wouldn't. I would be fine because I don't eat, so I'm good. <laughs> as long as we did my restaurant. If we did other ones, though, I'd be screwed. I, I, threat- <laughs> I, th- I threatened Brad that we'd be best friends when this was all over. Uh, Carcon Carne, this is presented by the Autobarn Mazda of Evanston.